Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about losing your passion. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I've recently lost my passion for coding. How do I get it back? I hop jobs here and there after school and bounced from SDET to backend and was just really not enjoying the constant mess Java and toxicity of those roles. No one seemed to care about code quality and it got to me after a few years. I finally landed a decent dev role recently with a good team, but if I'm being honest, I'm not doing well. I used to be a stickler for code quality, but now I literally copy and paste something and just focus on going home. I really hate that I'm like that, but I don't seem to care about the quality. I just do good enough and I'm not even, ex I'm not even excited about new tech anymore. I used to love reading up and keeping up with the latest tech, but now I just don't care what to do. Well, uh, so now you've hit the, very likely, at the very least, you've hit the, the down phase of, uh, of your career as a software developer, most likely. This is usually where you find yourself when you've become, like the honeymoon is over now. Uh, now what you do is just a job, most likely. This is what I've told the juniors a little bit about and even the more experienced software developers where uh, so the key in order for you to be able to sustain like a lengthy career within software development is that you sort of understand that sooner or later you're going to hit this, st this stage in your career and then it's fairly important that before you do, you have the skills to survive in the industry somehow at the very least. Because usually when you hit this stage, it's very difficult for you to motivate yourself to keep up or like keep on learning. So if you get to this stage and usually you see a drop in your overall, like your your enthusiasm for the, for the job is going to, to start to decline. And in many cases that shows as well in your personality and that translates into your higher ability and fit, uh, culture fits and so forth and so forth. So the thing that you should have is the necessary experience and skills to actually do a decent job. And if you do have those things, you can at the very least continue working and sort of actually make the money you, I'm um, assuming you're working for uh, and sustain yourself. Uh, if you still want to be a software developer because uh, in many cases when people get to this point it doesn't really have to do with software development they might even be getting to be depressed over the uh, career choices that they've made they usually as I said either try to just go through it uh, because they've been doing it for so long that this is probably their likely li likeliest uh, path to having you know, food on the table, and some people reinvent themselves. They try a different path. They re-educate themselves. That's a very common one, especially for us here in software development. I see tons of people who make a career choice and start doing software development instead of the thing that they'd be used to be uh, doing before. And so, the thing that I t uh, that I find interesting, though, a little bit, is that uh, you touch a little bit on the toxicity of your roles and no one seems to care about code quality and it started it's, it got to you after a few years uh, so this is one of those situations where I like to say that I like to ask is there a reason why you'd give two shits about that nobody else cares because just because other people don't care, that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't have to care. Uh, so something that I can take from my own career and sort of share with you is that this is very normal. It's very normal, like yeah, I even go as far as to say that you should never make the mistake of thinking that something that is important to you matters to somebody else, even when it's in their best interest. And that's sort of what you've been doing. You have most likely been dissuaded because you're th thinking that, you know, the industry is full of these 
people who care about code quality, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, when the reality is that no, that's not necessarily true. Uh, in many cases, it's a question of who you're working with rather than what you're working with that determines whether or not you care about code quality or not. And so the thing that I see quite often, and it's actually one of the reasons why I have the roles that I have these days, is that when I join a new team, and usually it is to come and sort of fix things if I to, to oversimplify things it is the, f the first thing I met with is people who have all of these excuses they have usually consultants who say that yeah they don't really listen about mm -hmm. things about code quality uh, oh yeah I just try to hack it together because I'm just doing this and that and like oh, we only care about this and that and I kind of go okay cool yeah I just listen to them I don't judge because I wasn't there I have my own thoughts, of course, but uh, I don't do much. And then I start working. And magically, when I start adding unit tests, even if it's just in my stories, I don't give a shit if the others are, like I literally just mentioned it in the code review, they should do that, for example, as a starter. And then I start doing these things, and I start engaging with the people in my team like when I deal with teams where like they don't really communicate like they don't really do this or that and so forth and I just start all of a sudden st things start moving in the direction that I want because as I said I'm, I don't care about code quality because somebody else cares I don't care about having a, a, a strong team because somebody else does it like is supposed to or like that they are I care because it matters to me that these things happen and that's good enough for me in order to just make it happen because I know that I have this the will and the skills and like all the things necessary in order to make these things happen and I don't care if there's like a hundred other people in my team who don't have that the thing I do care about is if when I try and I do I see that I actually do these things and I see that it's actually not working I see that nope actually even when I try to do my best like I can't really fix this problem then I ask myself am I in the right environment and that doesn't need me to be engaged or love coding or think about coding and nothing else because I've already established the 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 work pattern like my way of doing software development and that's what I fall back to back to as a default and that is enjoyable for enough for me so that I don't mind so much if you know not everybody cares about code quality and so forth because I don't need to force them because I know it's down to it, it's it has to do with my idea that I can control people around me and usually you can't I had this conversation just the other day with uh, with a co-worker of mine where he explained to me that it was he sort of had a few thoughts on like the directions a new member was taking the code and I said yeah and now the question is, can, do you have the authority to stop this individual? Or can you talk to them and make them see reason? No? Okay. Then you've just experienced the reason why economies f rise and fall, why companies f rise and fall, why society moves in one direction or so forth and so forth. It all comes down to who is influencing the situation. And all you as this tiny little insignificant person within the on the timeline in this universe can do is to do the thing that you think is right for this exact moment because the second you leave the reins to somebody else they take it in another direction. This idea that you can somehow permanently make things the way you want them or force things into a pattern of working that you want is at best a temporary but very futile attempt. So as I said, all you can really do is to take control of the things that you can control and do those things as well as you can. And the insight that the thing that you are feeling now is most likely the your depression over the realization that you can't control this. 
you have no control whatsoever of the people around you, what they care about, what they don't care about, your managers, etc., etc. You can't do that. And so you hopefully will arrive to the same conclusion that I did. And that is that the only thing that you can do is to do the things that you care about organically and see if that makes a difference. If it doesn't make a difference, go somewhere else because you can only control you and your own actions. That's it. That's all you can really do. And that is terrible, but it's a little bit of a sign, I think, of getting older when you start to realize that there are things that you can do things about and you should be happy when you make those achievements, but you can't expect to change everything about everybody. So what I want you to take away from this is that I suggest that if you have started getting into this sort of depressive state or like you don't feel care you care about coding anymore, it's not there's not much you can do about it because it really comes down to that you have to go through, as I said, the self-reflection that is necessary in order to figure out why don't you like coding anymore. Based on what you said, it seems to me that you got, have gotten dissuaded because you're out of the honeymoon period. You think that you can write perfect software. You think that your coworkers are going to care about good code. You think that the world is fair. You think that your manager should have a bigger paycheck, be uh, has a bigger paycheck because he's competent or she is competent when it turns out that they're actually just as ignorant, like they're ignorant of their job, etc., etc. Your neighbor is, uh, you know, um, evading taxes and therefore they are, can afford a uh, nice swimming pool etc so the guys the world is filled with people and things that you don't like and things that you can't really control what you can do uh, on the other hand is to do as I, I say uh, do what I suggest that you do and that is to control how you look at these things and how you deal with them because if you have established a work cadence of I don't really care so much if I'm this tiny little speck of quality writing uh, code or awesomeness in a sea of incompetence and legacy etc etc because I feel enjoyment from doing a good job regardless of if everybody else is doing it. I can tell my manager if they listen to me they listen to me otherwise I don't that doesn't matter to me and then you start doing the things that actually makes that difference even if it's futile even if it doesn't really like, because it's it's not about everybody else it's about you doing something that you enjoy and that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to study all the time and read up on code etc et it can be a simple thing as i actually like writing unit tests okay write the unit test hopefully that gives you some enjoyment you don't have to have a reason it's the same thing like going for a walk nobody's going to force you you don't have to justify going for a walk just do it it makes you happy, it makes you glad. And when you start doing that, you are in a better actually going to see that in many cases that's having it's gonna have a more positive impact than anything else. The thing that happens though is that you have to understand that these things are not always going to be fun. They're not always going to be easy and like you're not gonna get support. Nobody's gonna force you to be a good person, for example you have to make that decision and so it's a bit like in my opinion when you get to this point like checking whether or not you have been true to form when you've been exercising because when you are absolutely exhausted when you're completely out of it and so forth the only thing you can do is to fall back on the things that you've been doing for quite some time so if you have never really cared about quality software and you actually don't really care at the end of the day you're going to as you said copy paste and like hack things together etc etc nobody's forcing you to do that you could do a good job but you don't and the question is why don't you because if it, if it is as you claim this makes you feel good or it's something that you used to care about then why not just do it even if nobody else cares about it ask yourself that question and consider as well whether or not it's a question of do you actually not like this thing that you're doing all that much and maybe you should look at something else or is it the case that you're simply doing work with people who demotivate you because if that both of these things guys these things you can control you can switch jobs you can switch careers you can do things in a different way etc etc but creating passion for something that you don't really care about 
that's not probably going that's very unlikely to happen have a great day